Hello and welcome to my video blog for Saturday, October 23rd. You know, some interesting things happened this week and one being that Juan Williams was fired from NPR. Now, quite a few of us are probably wondering like, who is Juan Williams and what's NPR? Well, Juan Williams is the black guy on Fox. He's a commentator who frequently appears on Bill O'Reilly. And most of us probably don't even watch Bill O'Reilly, but go with me on this. Now, NPR is the national public radio. And Juan had two gigs. He actually worked with for Fox as a guest commentator, and he actually had a gig with um, NPR. Now, NPR got a little ticked when, he, when Juan Williams appeared on O'Reilly's show, and he made some comments, actually sort of supporting Muslims, but in this very off-candor, too much information way. He actually said that he gets a little apprehensive and a little afraid if he boards a plane and he happens to see Muslims dressed in their Muslim garb. Well, the very snippet of comments that he made actually gave a big bone of contention to NPR because they fired him for it. And Williams did not take the firing very lightly. He, of course, went public with it, with it and told everyone about what happened. And he, most importantly, told Fox what happened. Now, Fox, of course got a little up in um, a gander about it because they're like, what, Juan, you took one for the team? They fired you? And he's like, yeah, they fired me because they don't like you. Because according to Williams, NPR has been looking to unload him because they don't like Fox. Well, everybody should be happy at this point in time because now that Williams has been fired, Fox picked him up and gave him a much sweeter deal with him. And NPR should be happy because now they are rid of Williams and, you know, everything should be good. So the moral of this story is Fox takes care of their own, even if they are not morally or socially right. Something to think about. Now, in due time, everything will be bygone and we'll all sort of forget about this news story between Williams and Fox and NPR. But something that's not so bygone is Anita Hill and Clarence Thomas. Now, Anita Hill, Clarence Thomas, that's way back drama. That's he said, she said harassment issue charges that date back to 1991. You know, before the Internet. That's how far back this whole story goes. Now, Anita Hill and Clarence Thomas have clearly moved on. And that Clarence Thomas is now Justice Thomas. He's on the U.S. Supreme Court. And Anita Hill, she's, she's doing all right for herself. I mean, she's now working for a university. I think she's a university president or professor. But Clarence Thomas's wife, Jenny Thomas, she apparently has not moved on. She is looking to revive this story and that she left Anita Hill a voicemail message at 7.30 in the morning um, saying that she should apologize to her and her husband about what she did with her husband almost 20 years ago. Well, Jenny Thomas kind of reminds me a little bit of Lucille Ball. You know, if you've ever watched I Love Lucy, Lucy does these like harebrained schemes and she tries to get on television or tries to get into the Tropicana where Ricky is and we all get sort of sucked in the viewing audience into her crazy schemes, which are sometimes very funny. And, you know, in the end, Ricky gets a little embarrassed by what Lucy does, but it's all in good fun and it's all in good nature and it happens every week. Well, apparently with... Jenny Thomas, she likes to do little harebrained, crazy schemes, and they happen every 20 years. And Clarence Thomas apparently gets a little embarrassed. But the only thing is, they're not so funny. Like, it is not the 1950s, and you can't be leaving voicemail messages for people 7.30 in the morning. And all I have to say, it's a good thing that she did actually leave her a voicemail. Because something tells me that if she had actually approached Anita Hill and said these things to her face, she wouldn't have re received a verbal reply. She would have received a five-finger reply right across the face. So, something to think about. Now, Anita Hill said that she didn't quite like what Thomas said. She didn't appreciate 
her choice of words and the implications that she made. And it got me thinking about some other things that have been going on and that um, we got to kind of think about the implications that some of these politicians are making. You know, and these ads that are actually talking about how politicians are looking to protect us from the government and they have to go after the government. So you need to protect, you need to elect me so I can protect you from the government. Like, what's that all about? If you really think about it, that's a slight pinch of fear that they're trying to breed out there. And that anyone who wants to be elected so that they can protect us from the government, but they want to get into the government, sounds a little loopy to me. And then again, they say that they want to get in to protect us and stop all this government spending. You know, from the corporations. Well... That's something else to sort of think about, and that we got to get a little cynical. Yes, these politicians want to protect us from the corporations who are actually funding their ads behind the scenes. Yes, no one's stupid. We know what's going on. They're giving them a little money so that they can get into office, so that they can cut the government spending. So if they cut the government spending, what are they actually going to be looking to cut? Well, yes, money is going to government bailouts, but a lot of money is actually being spent for job retraining, outreach programs, community service programs, and more importantly, unemployment. So if we start cutting some of these things or actually drawing back, that's not actually helping the people. But a lot of people are responding, well, we don't really need a lot of money shelled into those programs because what we really need are jobs. Well, here's the catch-22 to all of this. If somebody really had the silver bullet to the job situation, don't you think they would have presented it a long time ago? Like, seriously, I got to elect you so that you can possibly give us the cure to the job situation? Why don't you actually do it right now? Do it right now. Start working with the people who are in there so that we can actually get somewhere. But no, it's like this dangling carrot. And it's quite silly because a lot of politicians seem to be acting as though they're running for student council. You know, making the promises to possibly extend the cafeteria hours, and give us Doritos on Tuesday, and silly little promises like that. Well, elections are not so simple. And we really need to get a little cynical about what these politicians are possibly promising to us. It's a little crazy. And that we only have about a week and a half to really think about it. I mean, is it safer to go with the devil that you know opposed to the devil that you don't know? Who knows? But on election day, we're gonna have to decide which way we go. And I'm sure the next day we'll find out. I'll see you next time.